use that torch. If you've been, if you're in our gardening group, you may have been following my saga of the asparagus. I had to get rid of one of my beds of asparagus and um, we tried to dig it up and really you can't do that uh, to replant it. So we're just getting rid of the bed and I'm going to plant a new bed. So I'm going to show you when we plant that bed how we do it and this this will be the third bed of asparagus we've planted and it seemed to do pretty well so I'm going to stick with this method. So I ordered crowns. You can order one year old crowns, two year old crowns. Um, these are two year old crowns and I, we won't be able to plant them for a few days so I'm going to stick them in the refrigerator because we don't want them to break dormancy until they're in the ground. But I thought I would show you what you get and 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 how we're going to plant them. So if you see these have got pretty good roots and before we put them in the ground we'll soak them in some warm water um, just for a little while just a couple hours but when you get these mostly what you're getting is roots so you think of them as any bare root plant that you get and and a confession the first time I got these I couldn't figure them out uh, didn't do a lot of research just wanted to put them in the ground uh, and I put some in upside down and apparently that's pretty easy to do so when uh, they grew they did great uh, but they're not supposed to be put in upside down so when you get when you get these they're going to look like a big old spider. And when we get outside into the garden, we're going to dig a trench. And within that trench, and, and we can do that in raised beds pretty easily um, because the soil is really loose and friable and easy to handle. But we will plant them like this. With this end up, and with the roots spread out so that they will grow and get lots of nutrients. So there's your big old asparagus crown. I have 25 of these to plant and uh, I'll show you how we do it as soon as it gets warm enough. In the meantime, these will be snoozing in the refrigerator. Well, we're gonna plant these now and there's just a little preparation to do uh, before we actually start digging. These have been in the fridge and they're in a semi-dormant state and they're kind of dry. These are two-year crowns by the way. But you know it really doesn't make any difference one year, two year, three year crowns you still are not going to get asparagus the first year. And there's a little bit of mold on these, but that's okay. And it looks like they're breaking dormancy. So we're going to get them in the ground. And I'm going to drop these down in some water. And there should be 25 here. And I'm going to put 25 in a 5 by 10 bed. I don't want to crowd them too much. And I'm not going to cut those moldy spots off, but I am going to rub them off. And actually, this is so common that it was in the directions, the first ones I got. It said, if you have some mold, just rub it off. So, I'm going to do that. We're going to move out to the bed now. And Fred and I will show you how to prep it. Well, while I'm waiting, 
for Fred to bring some equipment over here. I thought I'd take a minute and just show you my big old pretty rooster. His name's Randy and sometimes you hear him crowing. Isn't he a big old pretty boy? Fred just gave them some fresh hay and they're busy and happy. Well, as with all things in the garden, let's talk a little bit about the soil. We, we do raised bed gardening and this bed is, I don't know, three or four years old, but it was built with uh, two bys and it's five feet wide and when you're planting asparagus I have learned from experience you want to plant it somewhere where it can live forever because if you plant it right and let the bed establish itself you can get asparagus from it for 20 30 years so while I guess you don't technically call it a perennial it, it for all intents and purposes it's a perennial so plant it where you want it uh, one reason I'm planting asparagus today is because I planted a bed about five years ago I uh, planted it too close to our property line and now I'm having to take that bed apart and there is no way that it can be moved because the asparagus was so well established that the roots go down well so far we know three feet and they look don't show any sign of ending so when you're planting asparagus put it where you want it to stay and uh, this particular bed should last for several more years. It was made with really good wood. Um, but if the wood starts to rot, we can replace the wood without uh, tearing up the bed. So in our yard, it has to be in a raised bed. So um, we're going to plant in this. Uh, in the soil, asparagus needs uh, about a neutral soil. Um, our soil is about 6.9 the last time we had it checked, which is a little high pH for some things, but uh, most things will grow in, in uh, uh, 6.8, 6.9. I'm not going to plant blueberries in it. Blueberries wouldn't grow uh, or wouldn't grow well. So uh, we have a sun that's going to get full sun uh, for over 12 hours a day for... Uh, we have a bed that will get full sun for over 12 hours a day in the summertime. And, and asparagus does need uh, full sun with a proper pH. Uh, we're going to add a little compost, but raised beds pretty much re... What's the right word for this? They build nutrients uh, because they create an environment for... Uh, earthworms and we leave a lot of organic matter in here uh, and we will add more as time goes on but but this bed is just right for planting uh, and I want to give our asparagus a good start so the the first thing we do is we're going to dig three trenches about a foot deep which is easy to do uh, in this soil and Asparagus is actually supposed to be about two feet apart. The rows are supposed to be two feet apart. We're going to fudge that just a little bit because I want to get three rows in this five-foot bed. And I don't want to be right up against the wood. So I'm going to go in a foot, uh, over two feet, over two feet, and that should put me in a foot from the other side. Um, and I have 25, so I'm going to plant about eight on a side that'll give me an, an extra one somewhere I'll stick it in um, and we'll get started so Fred is digging the trench uh, and it needs to be well you know so many things you get so many different directions but about a foot deep we're not going to go quite a foot deep <clears throat> um, because I'm when you dig a one foot trench then you're supposed to plant your asparagus and fill it part way full uh, and then as it starts to grow add more dirt and more dirt and more dirt or more soil and more soil we're not going to do that we're going to plant them and cover them and then when they start coming up we will add some organic matter to the top so while Fred is digging on that end 
um, I'll start planning on this end. And we'll do one row at a time. And I'm going to move my camera. Okay, you are now looking down in a trench. And this is a scoop of good old compost. Now, if you've had your soil tested, you may find that you need to do some soil amendments. Um, compost is all I'm using. I'm going to put a scoop of compost in for each crown. And then I'm going to make a little mound. I won't be able to spread them out. For the full root length, but I'm going to spread them out as much as I can. So I'm getting a crown. I'm going to end up getting my hands dirty no matter what I do. So here is a crown that I think I showed you earlier. And here you want to give it a little spread. And notice this is the top of your crown and here are your roots and what we want to do is spread this out on top of our little mound of dirt and compost and we're going to do eight of these in this trench just like this and then we're going to come back and cover them. I'll do one more for you if I can get the camera set. That's the one we just did. We're going to move over about a foot. Okay, we're going to make our mound right about there. So I've got a scoop of compost. That was kind of a skinny scoop. Let's put a little bit more. Okay, this is a much bigger one. So we're going to spread her out and spread the roots as much as you can. You see this one's already breaking dormancy. It's starting to sprout. Okay, now we'll make this whole row this way and then I'll come back. Okay, here we go. This row is already. I'm going to cover these up. And as I said, now many of the directions will tell you not to fully cover them. To let them grow and then add more soil. I, I've never done it that way. I've always just planted them and covered them up. But I don't cover them and pat it down. I'm just throwing the dirt back on them. And when they break ground in the spring, we will add a little more soil to the top, some organic matter, uh, perhaps some pine straw or some wood mulch. Uh, it would have to be fine wood mulch because if you've never seen asparagus grow, it's really pretty funny. It's just like a pencil sticking up out of the ground. Uh, hopefully they're about the size of a pencil and so we're going to get these covered mm, Sun's pretty bright. I'm not sure you see that well and then we'll plant two more rows and then we'll leave this alone Until the weather warms up and spring is here and they start poking their little heads out I'm going to show you another bed. That's a little farther along Okay, you can't tell a whole lot from this uh, but people are always asking, well, what do I do uh, to winter over my asparagus? And my answer is basically nothing. 
uh, if you can see you can see where I cut down the plants uh, that were growing here because toward the end of the season I let them make ferns and then they stay until they pretty much die off and then I cut them back and I just leave the organic matter from that in the bed uh, and it makes a nice mulch I've got a little weeding to do in this bed which I'll do in the next day or two and when the weather's right as long as they've had enough water and enough sunshine they will start sticking their heads up and we will have some yummy asparagus this bed is three years old I picked last year for a couple weeks and we got lots of asparagus from this bed so all the work with asparagus pretty much goes into the planting and after that as long as you provide a space with sunshine and water and chop a few weeds uh, for 20 or 30 years you'll have asparagus do have your soil tested though uh, because you want to give it what it needs and if it needs fertilizer uh, find out what kind the right fertilizer use something organic uh, and give it what it needs not what your neighbor said his needed uh, have a soil test your extension service will do that um, because what you want you're making a long-term investment when you plant asparagus so find out what you need use what you need plant it and leave it alone and you should have some yummy asparagus maybe I'll show you uh, how I cook some when it grows thanks for joining us on Debbie's back porch so glad to have you with us hope you join us again tomorrow